This actually came from outer space. It orbited the Earth and was returned back down to the surface of the planet. Hey, it's Don. Today I actually have something from outer space. This was in space itself, orbited the Earth, and was returned back down to the surface of the planet. This is actually a cover that flew on the Challenger space shuttle. Flight number eight, mailed off the whole works. It's limited, it's numbered. Now, this isn't super, super valuable. It's not worth a fortune. But what will happen with this is I will sell it. It will sell fairly quickly. 20, 25 bucks right off the bat. I paid a dollar for it. Can't complain about that. Every one of these sorts of things I've ever had, I've been able to sell for a good amount of money. Now, the point here is that unique, bizarre, interesting, niche items sell the best all year round. Now, a lot of folks are having trouble with sales, issues with their sales right now. To avoid issues with sales, if you sell the right types of items, items that will always be sought after all year round, anytime, doesn't matter the season, doesn't matter any of that aspect, you have to sell something unique like this item here. I've had other ones of these, they always sell. Not super valuable as I said, but the, the value is in that it sells super quick and it will always sell. I won't be holding on to this, and again, it was only a dollar, so who cares if I do hold on to it, but again, that won't happen. If you're selling everyday household items right now, five, ten dollar items, those are getting less and less desirable by the day, pretty much. People blow out big lots of them nowadays on whatnot so other resellers can buy them, and on and on and on and on and on. There's so many uh, fractures in the reselling market these days right now that the best stuff to sell are stuff that would require expendable income. That's the biggest key here is the stuff, someone buying this has expendable income. They have enough to pay all of their bills all the time and have extra money in the bank and have more money than they know what to do with where they can spend it on stuff like that. That's the key. Almost every, 98, 99% of every single thing we sell and we've got, I don't know, close to 100,000 listings across the net right now are all something that would be expendable income purchases. For me, it doesn't have to be super high value, but right the second as it usually is, we're selling $50, $100 items just as much as we're selling $20 and $30 items right now. Now, again, a lot of people are having issues with sales. Sales have tanked in some areas. It's getting rough out there in some areas of, of selling clothing. Households, again, and I'm not trying to beat up on households and stuff, but right now, there's still a backup out in the real world in, in you know, brick and mortar stores, department stores, and household department type of stores that sell household goods and stuff. Clothing stores. Everybody has a clearance right now. Everybody has a clearance right now. So the prices from used goods to brand new goods isn't that much of a difference. With stuff going on again, some people may not have money to spend or they're not sure what's going on, so they may not even buy a new shirt a CD or anything else like that, or even a video game if it's old or it's a cheapo one. So we try not to mess with things that are, you know, not worth our time. Anything under 15 bucks doesn't get listed on its own ever in our store. And that's because, again, time is money. Selling five and ten dollar items that are in flooded categories that everybody sells is just not a practical means to, to make a ton of money these days. When we switch to selling mostly niche items, our sales changed. As well, when we switched to niche items, mostly we were able to continue selling decent amounts of items throughout the summer. We're still doing five digits right now. So again, I relate that to what we are selling very specifically. If I wasn't selling and didn't know enough about the items that I'm selling now, I probably would be in the same boat as many other people who are struggling to get even a couple sales a week. You know, we're doing fairly well, again, because of what we sell. So even when you think nothing's gonna sell, if you're selling in specific areas, specific things that people collect, niches, they're always going to buy, be buying them. It doesn't matter what season, what time of the year it is for most everything that we sell, because if they wanna fill a gap in a collection or something unique shows up that they really wanna have, they're gonna get it. The folks that buy from us, as I said again, have expendable income. 
That means that they have extra money they, they can just spend on just whatever they want. Whether it's, you know, economy or whatever else is going on, they still have the expendable income. Now, another consideration with what we sell, a large chunk of the vast majority of what we sell, there's only maybe a handful of people on the globe that would want it. So we have to play that with upping quantity. So the more quantity we have, the better chances we have of selling more stuff and waiting for that handful of people to see those items. And then that's the ploy that we make. I know a lot of folks say, well, I've got thousands of items up and I'm only selling a couple items a week. Well, it's not like it was 10 years ago, not even five years ago when, you know, limited quantity worked great. Unless you've got the best sourcing options in the world, and I don't know anybody who has those these days, you're gonna be struggling with a lot of other folks to either uh, sell in flooded categories or to spend time and, and invest in time into niches to figure out what else could sell that you're not going to be struggling through summer months. It's summer and honestly, last month was the best June I've had in probably 10 years. Right now we're, we're staged to do the same thing, five digits here in July. Even with the holiday, we, we sold some phenomenal numbers throughout the holiday weekend. Again, it depends on what you sell. What we're selling is the key to this. You don't have to sell what I sell either. I'm not saying you have to sell what I sell, but figure something out. The folks who sell baseball cards and collectibles, things like that, are doing phenomenally well right now. All the ones that I know. I don't do those, but I know they're doing well. Autographed hounds and stuff like that are doing phenomenally well. Rare and scarce items from movie tie-ins and things like that, doing very well. High-end military, high-end uh, comic books, high-end action figures, high-end vintage movie-related items in general are selling phenomenally well. But those are all in collectible fields. And that's the key to this. Knowing what to sell, knowing what will avoid you having a dip in the summer is the key. So uh, again, rare unique items like this make us more money than pretty much anything else we sell. It keeps sales going throughout the year. I don't have that huge dip. When I'm doing five digits uh, throughout the summer, you know, that's a pretty darn good summer. This may be the best summer we've ever had right now. We've played around with stuff on eBay, the pricing, and I do 3X on most items, so I, I've got room to play around. We do sales, I do sales and markdown. I do not promote anything, and this is still where we're at right now, doing five digits without an issue. So again, it's niches, that's what we sell them. Figure something out, figure something unique, figure something that's gonna require expendable income, and you will do better, I promise you. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. You know, you work on volume, you work on percentages. So knowing the numbers for the items you sell, knowing what a routinely this item sells for, that item sells for, or in that genre, you know, you'll do fairly well. Again, one-offs one -offs are a, a, a constant battle to get a bunch of good stuff that one single person's going to want. If I'm in a niche um, that's, you know, hundreds of items in that same niche, there's hundreds of collectors usually in those same niches. Not everyone's gonna need everything you have, so you've, you know, the odds are with you if you've got the right items. Volume is the best way for us to, I don't mind having, we're heading towards 40,000 listings on the store we share with you. We've got tens of thousands of listings other places, but we're heading there just on one single store as well. We're trying to hit up to 100,000 listings. You know, because the volume, in my opinion, in niches and stuff is where the big money starts to roll in as well. The days of having smaller stores, for the most part, there's sellers out there who tell me they, they have a couple hundred items and they're doing phenomenal. Yes, that's perfectly fine possible. You know, back in the day, we used to do very well with just a few hundred listings. But again, when you move into niches or long tail items, you have to, 
you have to have some some leeway there. It's a lot of work. It's not a game. It's not some easy thing. You throw some stuff up and you're going to be making a fortune. It takes us a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of effort to, to keep it rolling.